the five energies of yoga and Ayurveda. I thought instead of um, putting up a chart, it might be nice just to talk you through it instead and um, just set the camera up to uh, just an image. It's just outside of the door into the reserve because we do have a choice in where we live, always. And your environment around you affects how you feel. But the idea of yoga and Ayurveda is to keep yourself in balance, these five energies balanced. And they are air and space, which are more related to your mind. Fire, which is your digestion and um, the functions of your body. And water and earth. which are more your physical body as well, your strength, your flexibility. And each of these is divided into three, three names, so don't, don't get too confused with it. But just write them down if you want to. So Vata, V-A-T-A, is air and space. So that's more connected to your mind. Pita, P-I-T-T-A is fire and a teeny weeny, not a lot of water, but mainly it's the fire energy. And Kapha, K-A-P-H, air is earth and water. And we have these in us, all of us, in various amounts, and the idea is to keep them in balance. So I'll use fire, it's always a good example to use myself, but so I am going through menopause and have hot flushes. And so the fire energy in me is high at the moment. Um, and so I need to bring up the other energies, which are Vata and Kapha. Mainly Kapha, I've done my dosha type. And I am mainly a Vata Pita person, so I have those two the most. So basically I'm just going to um, go through the different types. And you just need to... Write down whether you Vata, Peter, or Kapha. If you're not sure, you can choose two or three or none of them at all. And then in the end, you just count it up and see how many Vatas, how many Peters, or how many Kaphas that you um, that you have in your own constitution at the moment. So you frame, beginning with so that's like your wrists. I've got thin wrists or thick wrists. So Vata, if you've got a, a Vata frame, it would be thin. Thin people are Vata. Pita people, moderate. And Kapha people, which are the earthy sort of people, are usually more solid and heavier built, so they have stronger and thicker wrists and um, broader shoulders. So just choosing which type frame you think you have. If you think you're in the middle, just write two down. Just write um, whichever you think, and we'll move on. Body weight, low, so are you thin, moderate, or heavy? So low is vata, it's air and space, so you tend to be a lot thinner. You tend to be a bit more active as well, you move a lot more. Pita is moderate, the one in the middle. And Kapha is heavy, heavy body weight. So if, for example, you've started to put on weight, then you, you get in a Kapha imbalance and you need to bring up the Vata and the Pita, the air, which is your Vata and space, and Pita, your digestion, improve your digestion. Skin, is your skin dry, rough, cool, or is it, that's Vata? Vata is air and space. Pita is soft, oily, warm. And Kapha is thick, thick skin and oily. You should cool. And just write down, or you could just put you know, a one next to your Vata's, uh, Pita's or whatever it is and work it out like that, just underneath. Hair. You've got dry or kinky hair. 
because it's soft and oily and maybe a little thin. If you're tending towards early grey, this is Peter, or red, so red heads have got a lot of fire energy and you probably realise that they sort of tend to be a bit more vocal and a bit more determined and possibly a bit more angry, the emotions are connected. But we'll just continue with this. So the um, hair, thick, oily, is Carpa. Teeth. Protruded space between or crooked is Vata. Peter is moderate in size, and Kapha are strong, white, full and well-formed because Kapha is the earth energy and um, it's connected to your bones as well, the heaviness in your body, the heavy parts of your body. Eyes. Um, Vata, small, dry, active. Pita, sharp and penetrating. And Kapha is big and attractive. Is your appetite variable or low? That's Vata. Pita have a strong appetite. Pita is your digestion. And Kapha have a moderate appetite. Disease tendencies. Vata people, it's more nervous disorders and pain. Also arthritis, it's a very drying disease. Um, Peter, it's more heat and inflammation. So heat, like my hot flushes, is an obvious one. But inflammation is, you know, I get a bit of eczema now, which I've never had before on my hands, which I treat with chamomile and um, the hoba, the mix, and that works really well. Also, other things like peptic ulcers, any ulcerations or any inflammation, uh, uh, itises, so cystitis, uh, colitis. They're all, or heat infections where you get a temperature. They're all to do with Peter, the fire energy. And Kapha is excess water and mucus. So it's things like coughs and colds, pneumonia, bronchitis. Thirst. Vata is variable. Sometimes you're thirsty and others you're not. Peter people are always thirsty because of the fire energy burning up the water in their body. It all sort of makes sense to me. And Kapha, slight thirst. Physical activity. So Vatas are air and space and they tend to be very active people. You can look around oft, often now I can, and I'll sort of think, oh, that, you know, you can see Vata people. Um, so they're very active. Peter are moderate. And Kapha people are solid and grounded, but that also make, means they can be a bit lethargic, maybe a bit lazy. Your mind. Restless and active is Vata, busy, busy mind. Peter is aggressive and intelligent. And Kapha people are calm, slow and receptive. Even your dreams will be affected by the energies or your energies at the moment. So if your dreams are fearful, and flying and jumping and running and fast, then you, that's Vata. If they're fiery and angry and passionate and colourful, then Pita. Watery ocean, swimming and romantic is Kapha dreams. Sounds nice. I actually I'm trying to bring up my Kapha. So there's a lot of things there that I think, oh yes, that would be lovely. Perspiration. Uh, sparse, odorless, is Vata, because the air is dry. Pita is heavy with a strong odour. And Kapha is heavy with a pleasant odour. So if you're not sure, if you're thinking, oh well, just choose one of them. Um, that seems the most obvious and if you're not sure at all just leave it out I'm just counting them up at the end to see um, which one of the energies you've got the most of urine the amount of urine little but infrequent normal but often is peter so little but infrequent is vata the dry energy peter is normal and often 
it's the fire energy, and kapha is profuse, which is the water and earth energy. Um, stools even, hard, dark constipation. So you, your digestive system is so important in Ayurveda, and I will talk about it a little bit when I talk about the fire energy. Uh, that's vata. Pita is loose, yellowish, or diarrhea. And kapha is soft and well-formed. Creativity. Vata people are distinct and rich in ideas. They're very creative. Pita people are more inventive and technical or scientific. And kapha people are more business-focused. Again, just choose in. Your memory. Average is Vata, excellent is Pita, and Kapha is good. Is the butcher bird. There's a lot of birds around at the minute, there's a lot of fruit. But when we're back to decision making ability. So if you've been having trouble, um, choosing which one of these, I'd say it was problematic, which is Vata. I find it hard to make decisions. Peter people are very quick and decisive. And Kapha people, well thought out. They spend a lot of time thinking about it. Speech. Vata people speak quickly. You might even notice yourself, I know I do, when I'm practicing yoga or teaching it, my voice slows down. When I get a bit excited about something, it's interesting, it quickens up anyway. But in general, is your speech fast? That's Vata. Peter people are very loud. Kapha is melodic. When handling money, if you've got the Vata money thing going on, it's wasteful. Um, Peter, it's methodical and Kapha people thrifty. And then I'm just going to list um, different, what would you say, um, well I'll just list them. So if it's Sparta, it's are you, so just give yourself a tick if you're any of these or um, write down that it's Sparta. Shy, Nervous, it's, in, it's emotional things, isn't it? Insecure, intuitive. Peter people, and you can have a bit of both, so you could you know, have a few Vata and a few Peter and maybe one or two Kapha even. Jealous, ambitious, egotistical, practical. And Kapha people are lethargic, Self-satisfied, resilient. And then we go again, so just again writing, if you're any of these, just write it down as with those Vata Peter. Kapha, do you love? So this is the Vata list, travel, art, esoteric subjects. I didn't know what that was when I first read this. And um, I've got more and more interested in it, so it's sort of, you know, it's actually yoga and Ayurveda and um, spiritual things and crystals and um, all those sort of things. Peter is sports, politics, luxury. And Kapha, love, quiet, business and good food. Do you, these are the um, conditions that you dislike the most. So Vata is cold, wind and dryness because air already is drying for them. Or us, because I have um, a half Vata, half Peter mainly constitution. Peter is heat and the midday sun. So if you're a Peter person, you tend to be hot and you dislike heat and midday sun. And Kapha, cold and dampness. Um, again, it might be all three of them. Just write it down and count it up at the end. And your pulse, so maybe taking your pulse. If you're not sure about this one, just leave it out. 
But if you can find your pulse that's um, either above your um, jaw, you just press your finger in until you can sort of feel it. Rata people, it's thready and feeble. Um, Peter have a moderate pulse and Kapha people have a broad, slow pulse. So in a moment, you're just counting up and then just writing down, you might have Vata 16, Peter 14 and Kapha 3. So um, you would write down that you were mainly Vata Peter type. And that means that you need to work on increasing the kapha energy. So water and also um, earth. And so there's different yoga postures, work with that, different foods, crystals, chants, uh, breathing techniques. It's all interconnected. It's all very interesting. And it gives you this way of empowerment, of being able to change your life, of being able to keep in balance. And a nice easy one for me to just explain before I finish this little video is, for example, I've got a lot of um, fire energy and so water is a lovely thing to keep me cool. So in the summer it would be swimming and also might be doing um, or practicing a a water meditation where you're focusing on the water element flowing and flowing yoga like the moon flows that you know the moon's connected to water you learn all about that as well um, midday sun resting bringing up the earth energy gardening which i've been doing for the last 15 years just keeping myself in balance and knowing when I'm getting um, out of balance, and quite often you can tell that as well, not just with the physical, but the emotional. So if you're starting to get irritable, the heat, for example, now in the middle of, I love summer, I still do, but I have to retreat at a certain point to get too hot. And um, so I coming in and staying still and doing some very um, maybe restorative yoga, helping you to cool down, legs up the wall, and a lot of different cooling practices are really important for, for me to keep me in balance. So I'm watching my emotions. Maybe if I'm feeling a bit worried or anxious, I have got a lot of vata in me as well. And it's part of our modern life, we're in our minds all the time. Then it would be again, just bringing up the um, sitting, quietly going out into your garden connecting with nature all the earth things help a lot with um, water grounding you so i will do um, a little talk on each of the individual energies as well and um, which sort of yoga you should be practicing um, meditations and just as well on my website I can sort of guide you towards which things you should be practicing but it is nice to work through the whole of the yoga and to see how it affects you. Namaste. Namaste.